Hi, I'm Chuck, KK6USY. Welcome to Ham Radio Adventures. Today I got up early to do some yard work, but I don't know if you guys can hear it or not or see it, but it's raining. Uh, we're, we're actually due for a little bit of rain. It's kind of nice. It, uh, that way you don't have to water the lawns and all your bushes and plants and everything. So it's not a bad thing, but I'm not gonna get done what I wanted to get done unless it stops. So let's go into the shack and build an antenna today. The antenna we're gonna build is from Coffee and Ham Radios. It's their new uh, in-fed random wire. And we'll talk more about why that is and the advantages and disadvantages to that antenna. And it's a kit and it should be available about the time you guys see this video. So let's get into the shack. Okay, hi guys. This part wasn't supposed to be in the video. I made a mistake when I built this, uh, when I attached some of the wires in the toroid. I just wanted to let you guys know, I know a lot of people will uh, go through the video and skip sections and I have a couple places in the video where I tell you what I did wrong. Uh, it's a good learning thing. You guys, uh, even if you mess up, you can always fix it. Don't just tear it all apart and start from scratch. I was able to fix it really easy. And I will show you what it was is I said in the video that you hook the, the blue and the black together and the second blue and the black together. Well, the second blue and black was supposed to be blue and red. Okay, the blue wire goes up to the ground lug and that is where I made the mistake. I fixed it. I knew when I said that it was wrong. I should have looked it over. Make sure that you have that, uh, that ape diagram in front of you while you're building this thing, guys. I know some people don't like music in the videos or they like to complain about it. I know who that is. When you guys actually see me wind the toroid, hey, have your favorite beverage, sit back, turn the music up, and just watch it. Watch these old hands take that beautiful toroid and wrap it. All right, just wanna let you guys know. Thanks. Okay, guys, in the box, you're gonna get uh, your winder, your Velcro strap, and your wire. We went with orange this time, mainly to make it easy for me. So you get that. And all this will come in a USPS uh, package. And then you'll have this. Uh, it comes with the Coffee and Ham radio sticker. Your, let me just pour all the parts out here for you. All right, you're gonna get some, some wire ties here. That's these. Some uh, ring terminals. Now I suggest on the ring terminals to uh, actually take the red part off. If, if you take a little heat, like a lighter, heat it up just a little bit, be careful not to burn yourself, and it'll pull right off for you. You'll get uh, two bolts, two, two nuts. So you'll get some heat shrink here. That's to put on these and your BNC kit. And then we're, we're supplying that. Now, what I told you guys, uh, when I did mine, I did it all with black wire and that makes it really hard. So you're gonna get three pieces of wire and they're all different colors, all right? And then to finish it all off, you'll get your, your big heat shrink to put over the top of it if you want to. So that's that one. A lot of times I don't even put that on, at least not until I do some testing. All right, now I hope you guys do appreciate, uh, you guys ever got the your your magnet wire, or your wire all just wound up like really tight and it's all messed up. I actually take the time to put these around a nice little die for you guys. And so when you get them, you can take this, find the end, and you should be able, let's just see if it works, pull it out and straighten them out, all right? It should all be about the same length. One thing I didn't show you guys, you also get a sheet that will show you all the parts that you're supposed to get and um, <clears throat> a link to the instructions for the antenna. We're gonna need the toroid. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna wanna wrap your toroid. Now, I know it can be intimidating to wrap toroids, guys, but once you do a few of them, it's really not that hard. Um, the hardest thing is just making your counts. And we're gonna do nine wraps around this and your wraps, or every time it goes on the inside, that's a wrap. So we're gonna start with about four and a half inches. So let me measure this out. One, two, three, four and a half. So at four and a half or so, and there's a reason for this and I'll tell you guys later why. I'm gonna put like a little 90 degree in it and that's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna slip this through. 
And right here, sometimes it, it, it really makes it nice. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of get it started the way it's going to go. Then I'm going to put a little bend at the bottom here. Now you're going to take one of your supplied zip ties and you want to kind of figure out how to tie it on there so it kind of holds it for you. So like a third hand for you guys. Okay. So I'm going to slip it under. I always have problems getting it the right way, but I think this will work. Now, in the uh, instructions, when you get them, or when you go to the, the page for the instructions, it's going to show you that Ape set up the thing where it goes red, black, blue. Now, you can do it any way you want to if you want to do it different or if you happen to mess it up somehow and not get it exactly the way he has it in the chart it doesn't matter what you don't want to do is you don't want to cross your uh once you get your wires in a in an order you don't want to cross them okay because that's not good you want to keep them all in the same order all the way through so just pull that through and i like to i like to get it inside the uh Sorry, my wife can't see that. She wouldn't like that. But uh, I like to get it inside so it doesn't bulge out. And then I'm going to take my... You guys don't have some of these cutters? Get some. If I can find a link for some, I'll put them in the description. Okay. So what we got is we got our... We have four and a half inches out. There's a reason for that, and I'll show that to you later. I think I mentioned that. So I got red, black, blue. So basically all you're going to do is you're going to feed this through and I don't know if you guys can see, but I tape it uh, at the ends, especially, and then a couple other places just to keep things in order. It just makes it easier for me. You don't have to. I know Ape says he doesn't do that, but he is the master at wrapping toroid. So, so we're just going to bring this through. Now you notice I have red, black, blue, red, black, blue. That's what we want. So when we look at the, uh, the chart, it'll tell you where each of these wires is gonna go. And I have to look at the chart because I don't do very many nine to ones. Um, and, but I'll, what I'll do is I'll get them all kind of cut and then I'll come back and show you guys where to put them. Okay. Okay guys, let me just show you a few things that I've done. Now I've, I've got this kind of ready to go and I'll show you still why this wire needs to be long. I, what I did is I connected the blue and the black here, like it says in the instructions, and then the blue and the black here, the certain ones. And I connected this one here because this is going to go to your B and C and you won't be able to get both of those in there. And then this one's going to go to your ground. And what we're going to do is we're going to strip, once we figure out where, a spot in here to solder here and then we're actually going to use the ring tip or a ring um, one of these ring crimp ons here and I'll show you how to take those things off now you want to prep your winder I put the BNC in I bend this out just a little bit here this is the ground lug so I can get to it a little bit easier I might actually move it just a little bit more and these two screws here this is where your antenna is going to match the antenna wire is going to go here your ground for your uh, ground radio is going to go here 
It's all been <laughs> set out good. Now these, your toroid is going to sit here and you have one here and one here and wrap it through there to get your toroid attached to the winder. All right. Now let me show you how I, uh, I do this now. I'm going to do this more the safe way today than I usually do. You do it how you do it. Just don't burn yourself, guys. So what you're going to do is you're going to take these. I think it looks a lot better if you take these and pull this off and then use the supplied heat shrink. So all you're going to do is go in, oops, heat it up a little bit, take another pair of pliers, grab it, and it pulls right off. Okay? So I'll prep all mine, and I'll be back with you guys in a bit. All right, guys. So first of all, we're going to uh, we're going to solder those two wires, the black and blues, together. Always put a little solder on your uh, tip of your soldering iron first. So you're going to pull this. And the best way to do this, guys, is to get under it like this and heat it up. And you want to draw that solder in. You can do it without doing that, but that's the best. And if you just touch it a lot of times, I use this small stuff. And we just want to cover that really nice, which it did a nice job. I'm going to turn this upside down because that pulls it up to the top there. Same thing with the other two. Put a little on there. Get underneath. And when you solder, you, you want to draw that solder in so it covers everything. You see how it just flows in there <laughs> through all the smoke? All right. Now for these... For these two, I'm just going to use some liquid tape. And remember, guys, I'm going to put a, I'll put a bunch of stuff in the description for you guys. Here's what liquid tape looks like. So, oh, oh, and this here is called Helping Hands. Like I said, I'll put that in the description also. It's it's handy. I didn't use it for this other than so I didn't burn my mat. Okay, guys. So I've put a piece of heat shrink here. I crimped this on for now. I've uh, cut that. I stripped everything there. I'll probably just cover all this with liquid tape. And a lot of this stuff, it's actually easier to do liquid tape after you get done putting it together. This one's almost impossible to get the heat shrink on. You can get the heat shrink over the top of these if you do it after it cools off. So let's just go ahead and solder these now. Straighten this one up a little bit. All right, I'm going to start back in the back here. Same thing again, you guys. You got to make sure it gets hot enough to suck it all in. Usually heat both sides a little bit. Now I can see it wanting to take solder now. I usually drop a little bit back here too. And it flowed in nice there. heat shrink does have glue in it too so that will help your connection just a little better all right so what we're going to want to try and do is oh we know i didn't well i didn't solder one spot but you know what i think i'll do it after i put this in there you probably should leave yourself a little extra i'm going to bend this back a little bit I kind of cut it short here, guys, but it just has to go on there. I'll probably push that down. This is a 13 millimeter, guys. I put it on with a socket, usually. I don't use the uh, the end of it. I, I you know keep my hand up close. You can strip it pretty easy, so be careful with that. 
So now I have that. Let me solder this joint here. Okay, I didn't do this, but you could run your counterpoise through one of these if you wanted to. For It doesn't really have a lot of strain on it usually. But you, uh, you could still run it through these two if you needed to. So what I did is I used my heat shrink. Make sure you get a little heat shrink on the uh, in, on the insulation on the wire also and the top there. And don't make sure you keep it back enough so where you make a nice contact. And then at the other end, I just did a loop. And I took a little piece of heat shrink there too to hold that. There's usually no stress on it. And a lot of times I don't do it, but you could guy it out with like a little, uh, a little tent stake or something if you wanted to. So we'll give you the length. This is 17 feet plus the loop. Okay, so I did the loop first and then I measured 17 feet to here. All right. Now we're suggesting on this, you can do whatever you want, but the wire we supply will get you 41 feet for the um, the wire for the antenna that you're going to put up in the air. And it, it's a random wire size. There's a bunch of sizes. I'll probably put a few of the sizes in. And I'm going to do a little twist with mine. I'm going to, I'm going to take the wire I'm going to put my loop in it like I did there, but I'm also going to, I'm going to take about, about four inches off that. There's plenty of wire for you guys. So I'm going to take about four inches. I'm going to make my loop and then I'm also going to leave a little piece because this, because this is good for, it's going to be pretty good for 40 up, you know, up to like 10 and six and all that stuff. It won't be especially great any any lower in the bands so if i leave a little clip here i'm going to put a little thing so i can add a piece of wire i don't do ad very often but every once in a while it'd be nice at night if i was out camping or something that i could throw a little extra piece of wire on and make ad a little more efficient all right so that's when i when i do that that's what i'll do now let me show you how this works okay so you're going to come through here what i usually do is put just a little bend in it like that put it through this uh, let me show you what I'm doing here. Here's the end piece here, okay? So I'm going to put it in there. And usually I can force it in like that. Now I've measured this out to 41 feet already, guys, plus my extra. I haven't done the end of it yet, though. So this goes through. This is your strain relief. So for now, just put it through so you have plenty to work with. Just be careful when you pull it through. It's a pretty tight fit. But we wanted it that way so that uh, you have your strain relief there. Let's say, and then what you're going to do out here is you're going to hook your other connector on. So I usually I like to crimp and solder, guys. You can do whatever you want. I don't really care what you guys do. It's your antenna. But I'll put that in there like that, and I will catch. I taught. I learned. I learned this from To. He catches a little bit of the insulation too. Guys gave him grief for it, of course, but uh, it's actually a pretty good idea. And let's do this first, since it's not on there all the way. <laughs> Don't forget to put your heat shrink on. You guys might want to double these. This this is 22 gauge wire, and these this is for 22 gauge. All right, guys. So here's pretty much the finished product. I did put some of the uh, liquid tape on there. This is how I did the end of mine. Let me put this over here. Okay, so basically it's just some heat shrink on the end out there. A little, little bit right here to retain the circle. And the tip of this, where the, where the uh, wire is, is 41 feet. And then I did the little extra piece here. And what I'll probably do is just tuck it. I'll probably just, most of the time it'll probably just be tucked in here someplace. Off the side, you know. So that... Uh, it's not in the way. And then if I do want to do 80 or something like that, then I can untape it or whatever and, and just hook it up. And I just put it in like this on there. Hopefully that focused. It's the smaller of the two ends. And the other end, you know, we send it with our link dipole kits and I just take them off and just put my own heat shrink on. So that will fit in there with a new, with another longer wire. And, and, and still, you want to do that uh, in the random wire sizes. So, 
So you probably want to make it like 71 or 84 feet for 80. The longer the better. All right, I just wanted to show that to you guys. And like I said, I'll probably just have that taped off most of the time. All right, so uh, 1.9000, 1 2.3. 3.8, 5 just for a spot, 3, 3.3, 4.4, 4.9, 5.0, 2.5, oh, that's somewhere in the middle of the general. 2.9, 17, 2.4, 15, 3.2, 12 is 24, let's say 9.50. Point nine and ten meters. Let's just do twenty. Let's do twenty eight five hundred. Two point two. And then I can't do six on this machine though, but I already did hook it up and it tuned six with no problem to one to one. Okay. Okay guys, uh, it did clear up enough for me to test the uh, thing on my antenna analyzer. I'll show that to you guys in the video someplace. And uh, it, it worked, came out pretty well. Now I will have to admit that when I was talking about hooking the black wire to the blue wire twice, that didn't seem right to me. So I went back, ejected, it, and it wasn't. So I had to change it. The blue wire goes up to the ground and it goes black to red and black to blue, I think is what it was. So make sure, I mean, I'm trying to video and look at a, a screen way over here someplace. So, yeah, and mistakes happen. So I, I redid it. Everything looks really good. Uh, it, it pretty much will tune any band. Now, like I told you guys before, it may not be very good on the lower bands, like 80 and 180 and 1 1.8. But if you add that extra wire to it and that link that I put on there is what that's for, it should do better. I mean, it's not going to be as good as a full-size dipole on 1.8 or 1.9 or something like that, but it's going to be good. So, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, uh, hit the bell, hit all. That way you get all my future videos. I appreciate you guys spending your time with me today. I'm Chuck, KK6USY. This is Ham Radio Ventures, 73 all, and hope to catch you on the airways, maybe on your own 9 to 1 from car or from Coffee and Ham Radios short for car. I mean, no, car short for Calvin Ham Radios. That's right. Later all.